So let's talk about all of these developments even further uh, with Enya Kravine with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. She joins me. Uh, Enya, thanks so much for being with us here on this Friday night. You heard there in Mike Tobin's report, and we got the news uh, this morning. Bibi Netanyahu and his war cabinet expanding the war. IDF forces will go into Rafa. That's kind of the southernmost city of the enclave there uh, as they try to root out Hamas. Uh, and so Secretary of State Antony Blinken, he was in the region mere days ago. He cautioned uh, Israeli officials against this. Uh, but now today, the evacuation of Rafa has been ordered here. How are we to make of some of these political considerations at play? Israel doesn't have to listen to the U.S., do they? So I think Israel's number one responsibility is to protect its people and to um, prosecute the goals of the war. Uh, number one goal of this war was to destroy and dismantle Hamas, and number two was to get the hostages back. And neither of these aims can be achieved without first going into Rafah, conquering Rafah, finding out what's underneath Rafah, and it, it's the final stage in this um, in this campaign, which started, as you know, in the north of Gaza right. and has slowly made its way south. So, you know, I, I hope that the administration and Israel can work it out. I hope that Egypt, I hope that Cairo, Jerusalem, and and um, and Washington can triangulate on this. This is a really important phase of the war, and I, and um, there is no way that Israel will be able to uh, have mission accomplished until it completes the part of the half that's going to happen in Rafa. You know, there seems to be somewhat of a contradiction at work here because, you know, it has been a foregone conclusion that obviously you would imagine the IDF would root out Hamas wherever they are in the Gaza Strip. Uh, so that's, you know, Gaza City, Khan Yunis, now Rafa here. But they have told many of these Gazan civilians, innocent at that, to evacuate to the southern portion of the Gaza Strip. That includes Rafa. It's very, very close to the Egyptian border. So now they're telling uh, Gazan civilians to evacuate from Rafa. So where do they go then? So I believe my understanding from my conversations um, are that this was always the plan. The plan was to try and get as many civilians out of harm's way as the IDF worked its way south. And now as it prepares to take Rafa again, as it searches for hostages, as it looks for Hamas leaders that are hiding underground, it needs to move the civilians again out of harm's way. And that means them now moving them northwards or perhaps west to the originally established humanitarian zone of Mawasi. So it, the IDF has a plan. It is looking at, at um, Gaza in sectors now. And as it moves into Rafah, it wants and needs to move the civilians northward. And part of the reason for that is there is a known, sophisticated, and deep excuse me, network tunnel under Rafah, which they believe, which is what the means by which Hamas has brought in all of its art artillery, the tens of thousands of rockets, all of that smuggling underneath the Egyptian um, Gazan border. And that very sophisticated tunnel network goes underground, under Rafah, and it is believed that that could be where more hostages are, are being caged and, and, um, and held today. So it is, it's absolutely critical that the IDF go there. Again, number one and number two goals for the war, to destroy and dismantle Hamas and to get the hostages back. None of that will happen if they don't first take control of Gaza and that border between Egypt and Gaza. You know, um, Inya, at the very outset of the war, U.S. officials had said, uh, you know, repeatedly, we have to give Israel the space to conduct this war. Uh, and there was always, and maybe you agree with this, some type of shelf life for that thinking, because it has so, you know, transitioned since then to now you had Secretary of State Blinken really urge Israeli officials, you know, not to even go into Rafa. Uh, clearly that was uh, not listened to or, or abided here. And then you had these comments made by President Biden, kind of off the cuff, a reporter asked him a question about some of these pending negotiations and deals uh, for a ceasefire, for a hostage release, uh, to which the president said the um, Israelis' uh, operations in Gaza have been over the top. Um, are Israeli officials there in Tel Aviv getting mixed signals from the Biden administration? So I think behind closed doors, from what I hear, the signaling, signaling has been pretty consistent. But I mean, if you watch that um, interview with, with President Biden, he's, he begins by giving this long 
um, sort of monologue about what happened with the special investigation. And then he begins to walk away from the podium. He gets called back by, by reporters. He goes back to the podium. He sort of centers himself for a minute. And then he starts talking about this hostile negotiation. He was clearly off script. He was clearly unprepared for it. And when he said that um, the response had been over the top, it initially wasn't even clear who he was talking about, whether he was talking about Hamas or the Israelis. And White House press secretary later cleared it up, said, oh, no, she, he was talking about he was talking about the Israelis. Where he got this over the top, I have no idea. It's a phrase that he used earlier in the week to discuss Hamas's response to the hostage ongoing hostage negotiations. So maybe it was just on the top of his head. I, I wouldn't um, dwell too long on that comment. He's clearly he's clearly just an older guy trying to trying to making it from press conference to press conference. But what I would point to is potentially troubling is this larger pattern of the change in language. Again, behind closed doors, there still seems to be pretty much Israelis in Washington seeing eye to eye. But the language of, uh, that's going on now in press conferences, is, it seems to be deteriorating. Okay. And, uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said just yesterday that, Israel, is, that the Israelis, just because they, they've been treated badly, they do not have a license to dehumanize Palestinians. And that, I know, hit a nerve with Israelis, they felt that they were being accused of dehumanizing the other, something they do not feel that they're responsible of, or something they feel that they've been the victim of, um, certainly since October 7th and before. And I would say that if any language has struck a nerve, that one particularly hit home. You know, because you can make the argument, um, at least from the Israeli side, IDF officials have said at the urging before Christmas, you'll remember, from Blinken, Austin, Jake Sullivan, Biden, scale back operations, uh, make them more targeted, pinpointed, uh, you know, scale back troops. IDF forces did that uh, before Christmas as well, taking out, oh, I don't know the number, but several battalions. And so there was really a shrinking down of the footprint inside of Gaza. And so you had that kind of before Christmas, you have all these comments. Now they don't track, do they? No, and actually, um, before Christmas, they said not only do they want um, the IDF to be more precise right. and, to, and to have less um, casualties, civilian casualties, but they want them to go faster. So right. it was on the one hand, go faster, and on the one hand, be more accurate and have fewer civilian casualties, which is, you know, very contradictory and tough in such a in such a difficult um, combat urban warfare combat sure. situation. So yeah, I think. I think there are some mixed messages going on. I think a lot of this has to do with the nature of 2024 and 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 and, and the upcoming elections in November, unfortunately. Um, but you know, there are some pain points still ahead, and not just in Gaza, by the way. I mean, the the what's going to happen in Rafah? Hopefully, the administration can see the wisdom of that move. Removing civilians from a war zone is generally a good idea, and most of us, I think, can agree on that. So hopefully. Um, the administration will see the light, but I th but there are some other looming problems that they're going to have to figure out. One of them is this um, this re returning sort of idea of the two state solution that the yeah. administration is intent to foist upon the Israelis, as the Israelis are what they feel is fighting for their existence, yeah. recovering from the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, and now they're being told, oh by the way, you're going to get a Palestinian. It's thanks in reward for all of your efforts, you're going to get a Palestinian state on your borders, and yes. You'll probably never sleep at night. And and that's just one of them. I mean, yeah, I mean, one of mine. Yeah, one of mine uh, that I'm looking for as well, if this is going to be centered now in Rafa, um, the Rafa crossing, humanitarian aid coming in not only from Egypt, but all throughout, you know, the world who wants to give to Palestinians in need. It's one of the major kind of byways and thoroughfares for that aid. If it's mired in a shooting war there in Rafa, it's going to complicate matters there of getting humanitarian aid in. That is a common refrain you have heard each and every day of this war, uh, that thousands of Palestinian civilians have died, that they need, uh, their you know, victims, family members, need this aid to get in at a pretty steady clip here. So um, we'll see if that's impacted by this as well. Uh, Inu Kravine, we have to leave it at that. We do appreciate your time on this Friday night. Talk soon. Thank you so much.